Welcome to Season 7, Episode 27 of the Ubuntu Podcast. It's all right, everybody, I'm Seems. back. <laughs> it's Wednesday, the 1st of October, and we're going to discuss what's happening in the news and in the Ubuntu community. If you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat thing on the website and in the hash UUPC IRC channel. I'm Tony. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember me? Who's he? Yeah. And uh, joining me this week, it's, well, the, t- the whole team's back together. It's quite nice, really. Um, so we've got Alan. Hello, Alan. Hiya. Uh, did you miss me? Yeah. I, would you like to say any more than well, that? Well, I missed you in that the audio production quality was slightly lower while you were away. If that means miss you, then wow. yes, I missed you. Laura just stuck out her tongue at you. Uh, <laughs> Laura is still at the console and in charge of the faders. How are you doing, Laura? Okay. Good, good, good. <laughs> Seamless. And Mark's here as well. Hello, I'm back as well. Fantastic. So we're looking forward to a couple of fun-packed episodes, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, should we just crack on with some news? Why not? Yes, let's. I do like a nice bit of news. And here is the news. (laughs) In a surprise move, Netflix engineer Paul Adolf emailed the Ubuntu developer discussion list recently to suggest that with a simple library update here and removal of a user agent string detection there, we could get Netflix in Chrome on Ubuntu with little or no effort. Wow. What's Netflix? Uh, So some people like to watch films and television programs. Yep. And sometimes they watch them uh, over the internet, which is a series of tubes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Al Gore invented it. Yes, that's right. Uh, it's a it's a, a fast and efficient method for delivering kittens, right. and, um, and Netflix is a. You subscription. might notice the information super high. Right? <laughs> 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 and uh, it, Netflix is a subscription based system where you can uh, pay them some money and then open your browser and start watching um, fo- programs and films. Okay. But up until now, it's not been possible to do that easily on Linux because of a few silly things. Uh, <laughs> including the technology that they use to deliver the video. So they deliberately stopped a bunch of people from <laughs> well, using it. It's a bit mean. It was it's it was hard. it was a combination of if it not Ubuntu well, Linux didn't support initially Silverlight, which you used to stream it, and later on the the encrypted media extensions thing um which they used to stream it. And so if you went to the website rather than sort of allowing you to install them under wine or something clever like that it just said nope you're on ubuntu you can't possibly be able to watch these go away yeah they basically detected what browser you're using with your user agent string and smacked you in the face with a page that says no you need to use one of these supported platforms because those are the platforms that they you know like like a playstation 3 or a wii or any one of a bazillion different devices that have a netflix native app but not linux okay but actually it did work if you yeah, if you, you jump through some hoops, yeah, you could right. get it working. Basically, if you got your Linux box to pretend to be not Linux right. by using Silverlight, um, Pipelight, or a Windows version of a browser, and you know various hoops to jump through, which you know you can do, but it's just a bit of a fact. So, is it now easy to watch Netflix, or is this just one of several hoops removed? It, well, it will be soon. So the the email came direct from Netflix. It was kind of a bit out of the blue. He uh, emailed the developer discussion list and said, uh, can you please update this library in Ubuntu? Because if you update that library, then I, at the Netflix end, I'll remove the user agent string detection and everyone's a winner. You can then watch Netflix. And this was kind of surprising. Nobody expected this this to yeah. happen. And uh, yeah, a few news sites went a bit bonkers and <laughs> everyone's happy once, once they do their bit at their end, which... Yes. We're led to believe that will happen sometime soon, and uh, everyone's a winner. Fantastic. And is it only in Chrome? Uh, yeah, only Chrome has the encrypted media extension, so it won't work ah. in Chromium. So, you know, if, if, if you don't want to use Chrome as your default browser, you could install Chromium, set that to be your default browser, and whenever you want to launch Netflix, launch Chrome, and mm-hmm. only use it for Netflix if you really wanted to. Right. You could even use it in an incognito thing, so that it doesn't track anything, and, you know, you could do that, I, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> speculating wildly there yeah so yeah okay. good news what's up next giant technology manufacturer samsung are going to stop selling notebooks or laptops to you and me uh, in europe 
The move includes the end of sales of Windows and Chromebooks made by the Korean company. They're, they're going to stop selling them to you and me? Yeah, just you yeah. and me. Oh, well, that's all After right. last week's I, fiasco. I, just... <laughs> <laughs> I tend to only buy ThinkPads anyway, so that's okay. Um, but they're a big manufacturer. They're massive. And they're pulling out of Europe. Yeah. Oh. Or, well, are they pulling out of Europe or are they pulling out of laptops? Well, they're putting out laptops in Europe. Right. Yes. So is that because people in Europe aren't buying laptops? Or people aren't buying Samsung laptops. Yeah. Maybe everyone, maybe this prediction that has been made that people are actually buying touch enabled mobile devices and not laptops. Yeah. And Samsung do, true. Samsung do very well on the Android market. <laughs> they make, they, they make a truckload of devices. Yeah. I, I saw a, a picture recently that was showing uh, the comparison between the, the number and range of devices that Apple sell and the number and range of uh, devices that uh, Samsung sell. And it showed them all next to each other, lined up in a line with all the sizes of all the devices. And it goes from like, you know, three inches all the way up to 10 inches and every possible size in between covering, you know, I want one that's four and a half millimeters. No, 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 I want one that's 5.3 millimeters. You'll get it because Samsung sell one of every single size. It's bizarre, but no longer laptops. And um, uh, the other thing. They're also one of the few companies who make money out of selling Android handsets. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They do have a massive marketing budget for it, but you mm. know, a lot of uh, Android handset manufacturers don't make a lot of money, and that's one of Google's problems. But obviously not making enough money on the notebook market. Um, mm. so I don't think I've ever had a Samsung a laptop. I don't think I've ever seen a Samsung laptop. <laughs> Samsung uh, t- TVs, didn't you yeah. have one? You had one, didn't you, Laura? Yes, my red one. Your and red you one had, is Samsung. You had the... Oh, yeah, yeah, I did actually, one. yeah. Uh-huh. I did have one from work for a few years. How yeah. you forget? No, I've never had ago. one. No. Yeah, it was a long was. time ago. It was two or three um, yeah. jobs ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still during the lifetime of this podcast. Oh, yeah, we've been doing this podcast <laughs> for, for far quite too some long. time. <laughs> Um, mm. Apple fans the world over have been distraught at the revelation that the iPhone 6 bends when shoved roughly into a pocket. It appears that the metal casing is weak around the volume buttons, which is very nasty. Uh, <laughs> a bent iPhone 6, that's one that is, you know, warped, not one that's been stolen. Uh, a bent iPhone 6 <laughs> continues to work until it is straightened out again. So, Alan, you know, as our representative what? Apple uh, <laughs> user. Oh, yes. Uh, how how have your people viewed this news? <laughs> <laughs> well, as I speak for all Apple, yeah, uh, they're uh, putting a brave face on it and uh, reporting that using facts from uh, internally inside Apple, uh, Apple facts. Uh, yes, they, the phones do not in fact bend. Well, no, they do. It. They do. Bend. They do bend, but only a very small number of them have bent. Right. This includes, uh, I think, nine customers. They said out of the ten million. Um, I don't think this includes every YouTuber ever who's bent one on video. (laughs) (laughs) On purpose. (laughs) On purpose, deliberately. Or the youngsters who uh, went into Apple stores and started bending phones (laughs) (laughs) that were on display in Apple stores. I don't think it includes those ones. So I think we're pushing up to, you know, knocking maybe 50 if we include all of those. But um, yeah, I don't know. So the, the, the top tip was basically don't push it roughly into your back pocket and sit on it. Yeah, which I think applies for many things. Yeah. Really. Are we talking about back pockets, are we? I don't know. I th- that's the original news story, Oh, I think. well, okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, my dad used to sit on his Palm PDAs all the time and break them. Right. Sunglasses. Um, yeah, but the difference is they didn't cost, like, knocking on 700 quid and just came out. <laughs> well, and, and well, were, then why um, would you sit on something that cost you 700 quid that wasn't a settee? Well, indeed. And, and <laughs> many... <laughs> <laughs> have you just bought a new set of? yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. i've bought one for this podcast studio you'll get oh, wow. to see it in the next I was gonna episode say, we, ha- we haven't seen it yet <laughs> no. you're heavily covering it up um <laughs> we should make alan and mark still sit on that one <laughs> <laughs> it's the like... naughty so <laughs> yeah uh, so a lot of the anti um apple press mostly in terms of like android blogs and uh people who just don't like apple have been uh reporting on how this is indicative of the low quality uh that uh, apple have on their products and this would never have happened under steve jobs and uh, it's because the phones are so thin now and they're the uh, construction is so terrible of the iphone 6 and the 6 plus but um yeah i'm not so sure there are a few amusing sort of jibing adverts from uh android phone companies as well Yes, yeah, I think uh, HTC did one, didn't they? And uh, KitKat. Yeah, and 
Kit Kat, really? Yeah, lots of Kit people Kat. were getting in on the uh, on the act. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Kit Kat's was saying, yeah, their products are designed to break when yeah. you bend them. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's good fun. Uh, I'm sure it's not good fun if you've spent out a fair amount of money and your phone has legitimately bent in your pocket. Yes. Well. They're also bigger phones, aren't they? So if even if your previous... Leverage. Yeah, exactly. And they won't fit so neatly into your pocket. So if you used to put in your slightly smaller phone in your pocket and now put a bigger phone in your pocket, it's more likely to damage it anyway. So I've had a Nexus 7, uh, the 2012 version, for since, well, 2012? Two, two years now. And <laughs> <laughs> I fre- See what you did there. I frequently put it in my back pocket. And uh, yeah, okay, I, I'm a large guy. I've got big bag pockets, and cheeky cow. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> it's got a Samsung netbook in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> the last one. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I've, well, A, I don't think I've ever sat on it. And B, it's not broken yet. So yeah, good quality there from um, Asus, making the Nexus 7. Moving on. Great. Well, well done. Microsoft have announced the Microsoft Wireless Display Adapter. It attempts to compete with the much more sexily named Chromecast made by Google. Costing $60, it will allow you to stream video from your device to a big screen using Miracast. So there are millions of these things around. Yeah, and now. they cost like, you know, $10. Why would you buy a Microsoft branded one? What's what, what does it do that the others don't? I don't know what the ones that do cost $10 do. That well, like what that, Laura's got plugged into yeah, the telly. I know, I know we talked about it. A few, they a few they look nice ago, sat next to a telly. I've, I've been away. <laughs> I've forgotten these things. Oh, right, so this yeah. enables you to stream video content from a tablet or a yes. phone or yes. a laptop yeah. to yes. uh, a TV. Yes. Right. Yes. Using yes. this widget that you plug into your TV. But that you don't need if you've got a connected TV, new TV, but I don't. Right. So some of them have got them <clears> built in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well smart TVs TVs do. some smart TVs do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Given, but, given that they're calling it a Microsoft wireless display adapter, I assume they, their um, intended use case is people wanting to connect monitors to their PCs or Xboxes without having to use a cable. Are they targeting domestic or business well, use? Well, you this? could also plug one of these, I would imagine, into a projector. Yeah. And not have to run a cable to it and not have to faff around and just press a button on your desktop and it discovers the right. device and then beams to the to the thing. 60, $60 is 40 quid. And I think, I can't remember what mine was, but it was maybe 25 to 30 quid. And you can get them for as little as 15 quid, which is... Even the Chromecast, So it's which not that 30, different, really, actually. The Chromecast, 30 quid. And in fact, $30 which as well. Which would be what... Oh, right, okay. Uh, but they did do a promotion recently where they dropped it to, I think, 20 quid. Yeah. And so I bought three of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. For $60. <laughs> I remember yeah. using a, a wireless projector that connected to a laptop connected to it over 802.11b. This would be probably a decade ago now. Um, and that was very, very slow. Hopefully the refresh rate on these things is, is slightly better. Um, well, for most of them, you're, you're streaming video, like compressed video from some other location mm. yeah. um, over Tinternet, the tubes, you remember? Ah, right. Um, so uh, oh, it all comes together. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so I, I tested this out because I wasn't sure about how good the transfer was if you were playing, say, a video. Mm-hmm. Um, and I tried it both with and without doing the weird cast thing. So it was coming either through my tablet and across the wire or down. Anyway, I discovered ultimately that Virgin Media's got a problem at the moment that means that it <laughs> doesn't work very well in the evenings on YouTube and iPlayer. So hopefully that'll be fixed by Christmas, at which point I'll do the test again (laughs) and see if it makes any difference. It'll all be over by Christmas. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. What's up next then, Alan? Oh, me. I just decided to nominate you. Good stuff. (laughs) Check you're awake. Debian have decided to switch back to GNOME as their default desktop in their next release. Having switched to XFCE last year, GNOME has been chosen for its accessibility and System D integration. Ooh. All hail System D. <laughs> so those spidery tentacles of System D <laughs> spreading far and wide. <laughs> so um, System D is uh, what, Alan? Really, you've been away R- that long? System D is really interesting, and we should talk about it in depth. The ones, no, no, the, no, system, sorry, the, the system D wars have been going on <laughs> like the time war forever. Right, <laughs> you must remember those. I think they've been time locked and forgotten right. about. Yes, so let's do this that. is a replacement for um, Upstart, essentially, no, ostensibly, no, or a init replacement D. for Init. Yeah, Init systems in general. Yeah, so it's how services are started and stopped and yes. monitored and things within a Linux system. Right, um, and GNOME has better integration with that than XFCE. Apparently so. Seems. 
Okay. It seems a strange thing to have made their choice on uh, a de- well, default desktop. I mean, I, I mean, it's, if, you, if you look at their wiki, there's like a number of factors and they sort of rate each each desktop um, as to how it performs on each of those factors and GNOME performed across the board better on all of those factors. But System D was a particular one. Um, was it thing, was um, uh, the fact that the project's you know being updated and active development because yes i think i think it was yeah there it was like packaging and yeah how well like how well they had relationships with the developers and so on because i know xfc has had a lot of criticism recently from various angles that it's it's either dead or dying or not many updates to it and uh if you look on their their git tree it's like the odd update here and there and mostly those are related to localization and translation and stuff and not actually you know Uh. massive new features landing which you are getting with um, des- more than desktops like GNOME, right? Mm. So I, I can see the accessibility being important. That's a that's a very worthwhile thing to uh, yeah. want to encourage in a desktop environment, particularly the default one. So I can see that being a good reason to switch. Um, but yeah, it's interesting uh, sw- swapping around and changing around. Mm. The wheel turns. Some people are cast down. Others are raised up. We also have some gaming news, don't we, Tony? Uh, I, know, I know you've been away, but I know you've been keeping your <laughs> finger on the pulse you, of gaming you, news. You've been taking your Nintendo 3DS with you, and I'm I've sure. deliberately left plenty of time for you to talk about this. And you've been reading the article beforehand, so you know what to say. Yeah, I know exactly what I'm talking so about. So hit us with the gaming news, gaming master. Um, th- basically, there's an opportunity to save uh, 75%. Um, that is about three quarters. Um, <laughs> on of? four uh, three quarters of the the price oh. rather than the the uh, content of the game what, what are we saving the, money on uh something called borderlands 2 um oh right on, yeah you... on the steam linux platform right uh, gaming platform i don't know if you're familiar with steam but it's a way of playing <laughs> uh like popular real real games on um on linux so, yeah, you can save... Other platforms are available. Yeah, I mean, it does, obviously, but this is the Ubuntu podcast that of we're course. talking about. <laughs> of, course. <laughs> of course. Why would we talk about yeah. other platforms? Um, so, basically, yeah, you can save a whopping 75%. You know, How much is it usually? Uh, about four times the uh, current <laughs> amount. <laughs> yeah, so it's about five at the moment. Borderlands yeah. 2, it's uh, five at the moment. Four ninety nine actually. Oh, oh okay. Get it right. Well, I did say about a fiver. Yeah. Uh, and... and you can buy a four-pack for £14.99. Oh, right. And when does this promotion end? Uh, it ends on in 21 hours as we are, as we are going live. <laughs> Great. So, so if you're listening to this uh, on the podcast... And uh, if we release it on time... <laughs> you, if we release it on time, you'll still have missed 20 it. Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so cracking so, um, topical news here. So yeah, I bought this yesterday. And um, oh, right. That's a yeah, it's jolly good fun. Yes. So Great. it seems to be a game that involves, um, you know, it's a 3D type. A 3D type game. <laughs> game, isn't it? Wow. That's my favourite genre. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, it involves, we... involves uh, dinosaurs, trucks. I think, so, and, I think Tony, uh, you're overloading us with detail here. Uh, Let's okay. move on to the community news. <laughs> the Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that enthralls, exasperates, or elevates you, tweet at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook, and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. Please do get in touch. I mean it. Just one message. Just to know there's someone out there who cares. And now it's time for some community news. And first off, the new Ubuntu cloud images have been released to address the recent bash vulnerabilities, which uh, I don't think we spoke about yet. Uh, did we? No, no, we haven't. We, no. Maybe we'll cover those next week. Or, or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll do some interviews. <laughs> maybe we'll do something. Instead. Yes. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so now that means if you get a new Ubuntu image on some sort of cloud hosting provider, then you won't have to worry about being shell shocked. No. So, yes, yeah. uh, presumably um, this requires the cloud providers to have used these updated images. Does the cloud provider host the operating system image or does the uh, cloud service user point the in direction of the image? Well, usually uh, we provide official images, yeah. as in Canonical provide official images, but um, 
and you can get those from like cloudimages.ubuntu.com. There's like daily images. But I would imagine that most reputable cloud hosting providers would update their own images as well. Mm. Okay. Cool. But, but these are just the official ones that, that we build. So, yeah. So this is just to address the massive... Uh, bash vulnerability that was found called shell shock or well, nicknamed shell shock why do why do vulnerabilities have to have nicknames and a logo because now? news <laughs> ah, right um so it was it was quite bad um but these are fixed in now and if you haven't updated your ubuntu system do so yeah yes. you probably should get on that yeah, yeah. yes the final beta release of utopic unicorn which will be 1410 has been released Ooh. Ooh. what's yeah. in it alan well not a lot <laughs> <laughs> well hmm yeah, it's uh, it's got all the usual, you know, kernel, office, browser uh, updates. There's been some, for the default desktop Ubuntu, there's been some bug fixes and performance tuning for Unity, uh, and all the underlying stuff has been updated. But there's no, there's no like, major features landing in 4.10 for a standard Ubuntu. Right. Um, Yet. <laughs> yeah, there's still yeah. weeks to go. It's only the final beta. It so, could be. Uh, it, yes. Yeah. I th- I'm. I'm hoping we've stopped doing that. <laughs> landing. Yeah. Landing new things <laughs> like right after final freeze into the images. So there's nothing significant in Unity. Nothing new that's changed in the way that people will interact with Ubuntu. No. I mean, it looks very similar to uh, 1404. You wouldn't. You know. You wouldn't really notice any difference. There isn't any like major UI moving around or shuffling or anything like that. Is there a good reason for people to upgrade then? Um, if you like latest stuff, sure. If you want okay. latest kernel and latest video drivers, if you do a bit of gaming, uh, as oh, I know you do, do yeah, yeah. Uh, then you might want your latest NVIDIA driver or something. But if you're a real hardcore <laughs> well, gamer, that. I, I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to play, oh, what was it called? <laughs> 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 on your S and notebook, um, I can't be bothered. I had to put my age into that web, into that site to see the uh, yeah, yeah, the totally. News. Yeah, oh gosh, yes. Yeah. So you do you know you well. might want to update if you want Lucky. the latest and greatest, but actually, fourteen oh four is a rocking release and it's LTS. So yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I'd stay on LTS if I were you. Cool. Says yes. the bloke who did upgrade. Right. <laughs> now, <laughs> and now wishes he oh, didn't. Good. Right. The voice nice. of canonical <laughs> <laughs> says. Uh, okay, what's up uh, next on the community news, Laura? Uh, Kubuntu 14.10 Beta 2 was also released. Oh, and what's in uh, that, There's Alan? a pattern here, I think. <laughs> what's, uh, what's new in that? Alan? I don't know, I don't run it. Not a lot, it's just bluer. <laughs> <laughs> and Ubuntu GNOME 14.10 Beta 2 has been released. Without um, GNOME 3.14. Oh, so not in fact, yes, there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of discussion on the uh, mm-hmm. GNOME Foundation list yes. about this very problem because they're out because the ubuntu release is out of sync with the gnome release schedule so uh gnome release is really late in our cycle so it's very difficult for us to get gnome into the archive Uh. in time for the release so i mean we used to way in the past when gnome was the default desktop but now it isn't the motivation to Mm. uh, put a load of effort in for the desktop team is low because it's no longer the default desktop but the ubuntu gnome team could do that and but they haven't so yeah, that's their choice. Yeah. yeah. I remember there have been discussions around synchronizing yeah. those release cycles. Yeah. And yeah, it's tricky. But there's PPAs for it. So, you know, if right. you really wanted to upgrade to 1210 and get 314, you can get it from a PPA. 1410. Yeah, that. No, 314, did I mean? 314 I meant 314. Okay. I said 1210. Yeah. Did I? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I'm on crack. You also said 410 earlier, which is weird because that, you know, is a 10 year old distro. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> But Moving on. Anyway, um, and uh, Zubuntu 14.10 beta 2 <laughs> has been released. Uh, what's in that, Alan? Nothing. Right. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> uh, and there's uh, Lubuntu. Uh, All right. Okay. I have no idea what. 14, I think that's 14.10 beta 2. Um, I, I think I think we should maybe move on to talk about some events. Oh, yeah, that I was going to ask Alan what was in Lubuntu, but okay. Um, oh, oh yeah. actually, just quick quick mention. Um, there's just time to get your nominations in for the Loco Council. So if you want to uh, nominate somebody who you don't like to be uh, <laughs> wow <laughs> punished <laughs> by serving on the lo- no, no, it's a great thing to do. Um, so, Alan yeah. did it for a long time, and it didn't do any harm to him. No, that Twitch is yeah, gone. Bitter. Yeah. <laughs> so tell, tell us about an event, Mark. Oh, camp! It's happening this weekend. Oh Ooh! gosh. Yes. Wow. Yes, it's very exciting. That's the 4th and 5th of October at the Oxford Hotel in Oxford. It's a free culture on conference, which means it's about open source and open hardware and creative commons and anything else Music people feel and like talking about. Music and craft and culture and politics. Yes. And... 
And where, we, where can I find out more and get tickets, Mark? <laughs> Ogcamp.org. Thanks for asking. Ah. Um, yeah, so we've got all kinds of cool stuff going on. Uh, this year we are sponsored by Ubuntu, supported by Canonical. Yay! Yay. The lovely folks at Linux Voice. Hurrah! Yay! The OGCAM community, of course. Hooray! And a new sponsor this week, uh, Moorcrofts, uh, who are sponsoring our workshops. So we're going ah. to have... Are they the lawyers? They are the lawyers. Oh, yes. I say it sounds like a law firm. <laughs> yeah, and I was right. Are they yes. coming along? Uh, yes, Andrew Katz, um, oh. who's one of our speakers, is... From oh, yeah, I've seen him give a talk at something else in the past. Yes. <laughs> yes, I entertaining. Have. Yes, yes he's, a, he's a good speaker. Uh, yes, so so we have uh, an open hardware workshop, um, which is going to be outside in that we've got a bit of outside space outside the exhibition hall. Um, and there's going to be uh, handy bot demonstrations there on the Saturday, which is uh, a portable CNC router. <laughs> handy don't know bot. What, don't know what you're sniggering about. I was um, just thinking of Medibot. Oh. <laughs> I just thought so, uh, Stephen Fry. They're oh. going to be um, they're going to be cutting stuff out of wood, um, including some awesome little old camp plaques they've designed. Oh, nice! So if you want something made, then they just want a bit of money to cover the expenses of of the materials. So they said that for one of the plaques, it'll be about a pound. In fact, it'll be exactly a pound because they don't want to faff about with change. <laughs> so and they're, they're these really cool little things, and yeah, go and see them uh, in action. And also on Sunday, uh, Open TRV are going to be there. Uh, doing soldering workshops they are selling kits for their home heating automation systems uh in the on their exhibition stand and if you want to see how to put one together they'll be doing a workshop on that they're also giving a talk um or uh on saturday about the project um and we've got lots of other exhibitors and we're having a party on saturday evening which is the venue where's that um the oxford hotel Sweet. So in the the university suite, which is where the main stage is going to be in the evening, it's going to be transformed into the the place to be party the suite. Yes, <laughs> loads uh, of geeks sitting at one end of the room while the music's at the other yeah, end of the yes. room. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, we will Dan have and some sort of merry, <laughs> merriment and drinks and sitting. And is, is, is there actually There's going to sometimes be sometimes dancing? Is there actually going to be a bar? There is going to be a bar. Uh, is the bar going to be served by more than one person? Yes, I've I have been told that the number of bar staff will uh, is calculated based on our expected attendees, and I've told them our expected attendees. So we're going to have three hundred bar staff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just just yeah, this isn't. We it's it's in Oxford, not in Liverpool. So the prices are going to be a bit more expensive. Uh, and you shouldn't go to Liverpool. So that's what you're going to what? say. It's an yeah. Oxford, not it's in Oxford, Liverpool, Liverpool. On that by the way. bombshell. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, we'll probably have some sort of informal gathering on the Friday as well, but we'll post more details of that um, nearer the time. Yeah, if you follow um, Ogcamp on Twitter. On Twitter, yes. Yes, you'll find out more. <laughs> That's all for episode 27. We'll be back, well, next week, I think, um, <laughs> when we will be, well, get, I think we're going to be just throwing we'll be, some content out there, aren't we? It will, it will be the post Og Camp blues. Oh, are you going to be sad about it? <laughs> Maybe. Well, you know, because I'll have to or, wait another year for Og Camp, won't or I? Or hungover. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, that's it. We're going to be putting some really interesting content out there, so make sure you join us. <laughs> if you are listening live, <laughs> basically keep listening, and we're going to be... Uh, you know, batch right back. <laughs> if you're not listening live, you're listening downloaded. Well, wait till the next episode comes out. Then download away that. all our secrets. Unless you now. waited a week and downloaded two at once, in which case, carry on listening. Thanks for listening. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>